Sorry. So first up. Okay, first up. We've got a bunch of little Q Spy breakout boards. So, you know, when I'm working on dev boards or my controller, CircuitPython, or even actually little embedded Linux boards, um, Q Spy flash memory is often used when you want like two to 16 megabytes of data. Um, these chips only come in SOIC, and I'm always like, ah, oh, I just want to like wire it up and like I don't want to have to hot air, you know, the chips on and off. Um, also, there's some projects that used to use the dip versions of these chips, which have been discontinued. Uh, so I thought I'd make a little breakout, you know, just for each one of these chips. The 16, um, which is eight, 16 megabit, 2 megabyte. We also have the 64, which is 64 megabit, we'll 8 megabyte. These. And then finally, the 128 megabit, which is 16 megabytes. So these are all, it's the same. Oh, wait, wait, go back. Whoa. Sorry, get you back up, back it up. I meant to do that. Back it up. I meant, I meant to do that, I swear. Okay, that's fine. All right, yeah, so, stop so these it. are the three. There's three. There's 16, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 16, 64, and 128 megabit. Okay, that's so where my mistake is. Each one of these is, that's fine. It's the 24. It's the 24Q, uh, one tw you know, XXX, JV, JVI, JVISSQ. Basically, it's the quad version, the Q SPI version of these chips. You can use it in non quad. So single channel or dual channel SPI. However, just because I tried this and then realized it didn't work, the quad enable bit is permanently set. You, so you, first off, you don't have to set it, yay, because most people don't want to have to set it. Um, but you also can't disable it. So that hold and white protect pins that would normally be there for SPI mode don't function. You, it, it's really meant for quad SPI only, although you can use it in plain SPI mode. It's also only three volt. It's just a basic little breakout, but for a couple bucks, basically, I was just tired of soldering these two breakout boards. So um, for people who want to use these in CircuitPython, for embedded Linux, for MicroPython, or you can use our, our Arduino SPI Flash library um, to interface with these, and you can use them as a like mass storage. They're just really inexpensive, and if you, just, if you don't need a full SD card, you just need like two to 16 megabytes these work really well and they're very simple and they're now dip like they're they're aligned now with the dip size they're 0 0.3 inches 0 0.1 inch spacing so if you want to use them in a breadboard or in a, a board that has a uh, h dip socket this will fit just fine we gives you some header as well okay uh next up okay next up we got ahead of ourselves so if you're using stem qt and who isn't nowadays i mean it's like so hot it's all the fashion um Stemic qt and quick and all of the similar i squared c pluggable devices um are really popular they're chainable they're super fun but there is one thing which uh, i always have to warn people about which is that if you have something like a metro mini um, v2 or an arduino or any other older microcontroller system that has five volt power and five volt logic you will want to um, do a I squared C level shifting and power shifting to make sure that you don't blast five volts into your three volt sensor or device. Like this HT20 actually happens to be five volt compatible, but you know, if you're using a BME 280 or if you're using the ENS 160 or you're using, um, you know, any other sensor or device, almost all chips that are on I squared C are three volt logic only. And uh, if you put five volts into them, you could damage them. And so this logic level shifter is something, you can see the arrows, it takes five volts and it gives you a regulated output. It has a 500 milliamp, three volt regulator and a five volt to three volt logic level shifter. Uh, so, you know, you can take five volts from your Uno or from your old ST board or your pick basic or whatever, whatever you've got that's five volts and it gives you a clean three volt output. It also gives you breakout boards for pins for five volts and three volt logic and um, power. So if you want to use this on a breadboard, it's also kind of like an adapter, but for Adafruit boards, to be honest, all of our boards are three volt or five volt compatible, but there are a lot of other people making boards like the SparkFun Quick, which is the originator of the standard and other companies, they may not make them um, five volt compatible. And I just want to make sure people who are still using Unos and there's a lot of them 
um, can safely take advantage of this plug and play system without, you know, causing damage to their uh, sensor devices. Okay, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our community, our customers, our team, and all of the gold plated diamonds out there, is more cowbell. Yay! I could have used a little more cowbell. <laughs> That's right. We're about to kick off so many cowbells that it is cowbell, cowbell, cowbell. That's why we. Uh, You're gonna say. What? I gotta have more cowbell. That's, actually, you won't say that because you'll be. I need more be, cowbell. You're gonna okay, be tired so of what's, what's the first cowbell? Okay, so the first cowbell. Uh, I mean, I always start with a prototyping board because that's how I actually prototype the other cowbells. Um, so especially for the Pico W, um, if you want to do IoT projects and you want to use our Stemma QT. Um, sensors or if you want to just easily reset your board this is a little prototyping board it's very inexpensive um, it's designed to just be like a little throwaway you can solder headers onto it plug in your Pico and it gives you a prototyping area and I'll talk about and I'll point out all the prototyping area stuff and then it also gives you a uh, stomach QT and a reset button so it's like kind of like a handy beginner getting your project started but you don't need any you don't need a lot of comp complicated extras um, on your board so let's go to the overhead because this one I gotta I gotta explain how this works so the Pico actually a lot of times people either have it with uh, headers attached or they solder on headers um, so that when you get the proto cowbell it does not come with headers and the reason it doesn't come with headers is because you can configure it in so many different ways you can plug in um, these skinny sockets if you want it to be super slim you can put in these stacking headers which i recommend or you could put in these socket headers and like we don't want to assume which one you want personally i like the stacking the most because it means you can then you know plug it into a breadboard like so and then you plug in um, the pico on top and you have a little bit of space over here what does um christopher walken say I need more cowbell. All right, well, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> um, so there's a plenty of space you can solder in components, you know, capacitors, connectors, whatever you need to. There's an edge mount reset button. So reset button is not built into the Raspberry Pi Pico, but it's very handy, especially if you want to go into bootloader mode by holding down the boot select and resetting, or if you just want to reset your board. So there's a little edge launch reset. Um, so you don't have to unplug and replug your Pico to, uh, you know, load CircuitPython. And then on the other end, we've got a Stemic UT connector. So it's got a uh, three volt power, um, ground clock and data. And the clock and data are connected to pins IO four and five. That's because it's the default Phil Hauer Arduino core wire I squared C interface. Um, if you're using MicroPython or CircuitPython, you'll just want to pass in four and five as the initializers for the I squared C connection. Um, so uh, all the grounds are the square, you know, white rectangular, cause you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of ground pins. And then this is the ground pad. Every pin has a duplicate. So, you know, every though, like this is, uh, you know, IO 13 and there's, you know, this is what connects to um, the Pico and then the pad next to it is you can jumper it. So every pin has like a little twin sister next to it. So you can jumper to it. And then the three volt line is the only one that has, it's extended out and this is all three volt because you'll probably need a lot of three volt power. And the rest of the pins are kind of like a little breadboard uh, four row connects. And I think there's like 13 rows of four. You can always cut the you know pads if you want to have them separated, but chances are you want to make uh, multiple connections to each row. It's not a huge prototyping area, but it's designed to be you know, skinny and fit underneath your Pico or Pico W for, for quick uh, prototyping. And it's like only a couple bucks. So, you know, you get it. I recommend, again, the stacking headers. Um, I think those are the kind of the most uh, fun to play with because you can plug into a breadboard. But if you want to not have a breadboard involved, you know, you plug this in and it, it fits underneath compactly. Or if you want like a super skinny, like, you know, barely any space, but it's the most compact sandwich, uh, the super skinny um, socket headers work as well. There's no such thing as skinny stacking headers, unfortunately. This is, these are the three options that we've got. But this is, you know, and it has a nice silk screen with Penguin. Oh, and uh, one, one last thing. So the I squared C also has a breakout here 
these four pins are the I squared C JST breakout. So clock data, three volt and ground. And that's for, in case you don't want to use IO four and five, you can connect to the I squared C power and data and connect them to other pins. You actually don't even have to use it for I squared C. You could use it for just GPIO. Like there's no pull ups. So even though it's designed for I squared C usage, you don't have to do that. So this is our first cowbell. I got a fever and the only prescription it's more cowbell. <laughs> All right, and that's new products for the week.